Divine Truth Assistance Group Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Using My Will to Love in the World presentation, Jesus encourages us to apply what we have learned from the Developing My Will to Love group of the Education in Love series and to see the opportunities to use our will to love in day-to-day -day life. Recorded on the 12th of March, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. <laughs> How are we doing? One more hour and you'll be free. <laughs> uh, <I> wish. You wish. <laughs> 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 well said, well said. <laughs> okay. Well, this discussion is a discussion we wanted to have with you because we feel it's important for you to understand how you can use your will to love in the world we live in. It's, it's no good just to think that it's just you. The reality is that a lot of the reasons for using your will to love are so that you can benefit other people. Right? And, uh, you know, you can see already how other people using their will out of harmony with love has harmed your life. You know, parents and grandparents and so forth, generation after generation, chosen to use their will out of harmony with love and they've harmed your life. They've, so they even harmed their unborn children by using their will out of harmony with love. So you can see there's a great impact of of choosing which way you're going to choose here has a great impact not only on your own life but on the life of generations of people to come and this is something we've discussed already in the in these sessions the power of using your will and the wide ranging effects it has on people all over the planet but also people who are not even born yet right now, what I wanted to talk to you about here is that, is that you know, there's one advantage in, of living in an unloving world, and you know what that is? Yep. <laughs> it, can <only> <laughs> it can only get better. Well, that's one advantage, but let's, let's look at it from the point of view of using your will to love. No, well, no, you can see what not to do, but that's not what I'm getting at. So, Amber, you want to say? We use the mic. Um, the advantage is that you have a lot of people to love. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. There's a there's a lot of opportunities to love in a world that's unloving, isn't there? Lots of opportunities. You imagine you just for a moment you're in the celestial heavens. And, uh, and everyone around you is in the celestial heavens too, you know, so everyone's loving. Now, there's not much of an opportunity there to, to see huge effects of love on people who are unloving. To, to see the huge effects of love on people who are unloving, you've got to actually go to the hills and help them. And that's why a lot of celestial spirits do that. They go to the hills and help people and they come to earth here and help you for that reason. Because they they can see the power of love and the effect that that love has on people's life. And it, and it actually educates them further about the power of love, even on unloving people. Right? Right? Thanks. Um, that seems to um, tie in with a question that I'd been burning to ask you during the last one. Yeah. Um, and it, it was about... Um, God is, uh, God is good. And when I was thinking about that, I thought, well, if God is good, then um, bad people won't be able to hurt good people. Um, and then I realised, well, that's what happens in the spirit world. The, the people in the hells can't adversely affect people in higher spheres. Correct. And then I thought, well, why didn't God create the earth like that? Yeah, well, see, this is another thing that I feel uh, I can answer the question, and I actually have done in the past. But I think it's an area for your investigation. Right? It is a good question, very good question, and there's some very good answers. 
for that question. Very logical and good answers as to why God's done that. And so rather than answering it, I feel you need to do an investigation of what that might be. Well, you've just given me a good clue in what you just said. What's that? You know, <laughs> about how there's opportunities to love there. Yeah, far more opportunities to love. See, see how, how do you test the strength of your love, Graham? Do you, do you just love other people who love you? It, does that test the strength of your love? Well, to be truthful, probably yes. Yeah? I, I, no, pr probably I probably only love people that love me. Yeah, well, that's, the average person does that, yes. Yeah. But does that test the strength of your love, really? No. Not really, does it? No. The, the real test of the strength of love is that you love people who don't love you. Isn't it? Mm. Now, where are the people who don't love you? Well... Yeah, you, you, you got seven billion of them here. <laughs> so you've got a great opportunity to really test the strength of your love here. So you being crucified, was there an opportunity to, for you in that? Of course. Corny changed because of me using that opportunity. Yep. He could feel my love while he was hammering the nails in. And that caused him to change. Yeah. Big, big effects on a person. And, and you know, it, there's a quote in the Bible that I'd like to share with you too. I'm quoting the Bible a couple of times today. Don't be too afraid about that. <coughs> Naturally, it's about my life, so some of it's going to be right, right? But, but, this, but I talked about this concept of loving the people who only love you or only loving the people who love you. And how that's not really a, a demonstration of the strength of love. All that's really doing is reciprocal, isn't it? It's like loving somebody else because they love you, which is a very reciprocal arrangement, almost like a bartering system. You love me, I'll love you. If you don't love me, then I won't love you, type of thing. Well, in the, on the earth, you have an opportunity with what you choose to do to love people who don't love you who don't even know you, who don't even care about you. You've got an opportunity to love them. And, and therefore, you've got a great opportunity to develop this character of love, which is unique, in that love can be given and shared with people who don't understand the importance of it at this point. Is there um, a thing where I've noticed sometimes when you start in hardship, um, the learning is greater and you end up stronger because of it. Mm -hmm. Like, as in, um, So if we start on the earth where it's actually harder in this sense mm -hmm. than it is in the spirit world, that, does that somehow um, help us in our progression later? Yes, it does. In what way? What's the major way it helps us? Somehow or other, our love that we have developed on earth, any love that we do develop on earth, yeah. is stronger and more robust. Yeah, but why is that? Because it can handle people that are unloving to you. But why is that? It's related to the subject we've been discussing all week. You have to have a stronger will yeah. to love people who don't love you. Yeah. You see? That's what it relates to. In the process of loving people who don't love you, you are developing a much stronger will than you would ever have developed otherwise. So what we've found through experience is that the persons who develop their will to love on earth find the spirit world much easier in terms of their progression. And the reason why they do is they've already developed their will to such an extent that they can be opposed and still love. So that's the greatest benefit of us starting now rather than waiting for the spirit world. Yes, your will will be developed in a much more powerful way if you start now. Okay. That's the advantage. Isn't that an amazing advantage? Because, you know, it, it's very interesting, and if you analyse uh, the history of the, of the celestial heavens, the people who reached the 
the top of the, sp of the celestial heavens first were all people who used their will to love on earth. They were the ones that got there soonest. They got there soonest. And the reason why is because they had to develop their will in an environment that opposed them. That's how important your will is. If you can develop your will in an environment that opposes you, think how much better it's going to be when the environment doesn't oppose you anymore. How much stronger you're going to be, how much more clearly defined your future path is for yourself. Because you've already had to do it even amongst opposition, even amongst people attacking you, even amongst potential violence. You've still engaged the exercise of your will. Very powerful. Very powerful to do that. And this is why the people who have arrived in the soul union state first were all people who exercised their will to love on earth first. And the people who only started exercising their will of lo to love once they arrived in the spirit world, no matter how long they lived in the spirit world prior to the first century, they arrived in the union state after the people who lived on earth. That's why in the Bible I also said, and there's something I did say, many of the people who are last will become first. Because they have had to, these people on earth have had to, you, if you exercise your will to love here on earth in an environment that currently does not support you doing it, your will is the thing that gets developed the most. Your will is going to have to be quite intense, isn't it? It's going to have to be strong. It has, it's going to have to be not modified or manipulated by other people. You're going to have to really embrace the use of your will to do that. The beauty of doing that is that in the future when things are easy, your will will still be engaged in the same way with that strength and power. Um, yeah, uh, like... I've often felt also like, say for example with Jen, where she's had such a horrendous childhood that in the long run that's actually can be of benefit because once she gets, it's going to be really hard for her to get through it, but once she gets through it, it'll, it, it, what she's had to develop in order to get through it will benefit her forever. Yes, but as long as she does it here. Okay. Because if she puts it off here and she just uses her will with her anger here, then she's not going to do that. Then okay. it'll be in the spirit world, it will be slowly, she'll be slowly drawn to that place, you see. It just depends on you whether you're doing it here or not. Does that make sense? And many of you have had the concept, once you heard about the spirit world, and many, many, thing, many of you have the concept, oh, I'll just put off everything until I die and then everything will be good after that. Well, there's a few pr problems with that. One, one is that you don't know if the gift's still going to be on offer by the time that happens. So that's one problem. Another problem, though, is your will has already demonstrated that you're not willing to do something in when there's opposition. So your will's not going to be very well developed. Your, your will, in fact, is going to have some major holes in it, actually. And that's going to not stand you in good stead for your future. Right? So, yeah, there's a great advantage to developing your will here on earth. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Karen? Um, it strikes me there's a gender difference. Um, like I, I love my father who doesn't love me and I don't love my mother who doesn't love me and I very much want God to be a male God. Yeah. And it sounds like I need to really develop or explore the reason why I don't want to love a woman. Karen, so what's that got to do with our conversation? Well, I, th I thought maybe you could... Um, I don't understand what it's got to do with my conversation with you right now. It seems to me to be quite a fairly selfishly motivated question, actually. Because we're, we're trying to focus on using our will to love in the world and you're now asking a personal question about, about the fact that you, you've got issues between dad and mum. And I think it's quite clear from our discussion already what you need to do with that. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? 
maybe I was thinking of it more as a observation that if 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 a person has differences in their will to love different genders, yes, um, that that is an issue. Of course, it's an issue because because there's an equality issue there. I agree. Yep, and. Well, there wasn't really so much a question. I thought maybe you would either um, develop that or not. I don't know. Well, if you think about it logically, many of you have no will to love certain people and a lot of will to love somebody else. That tells me that your definition of love is very, very distorted. Because love doesn't do that. Love loves other people equally, not, not, not with... with you know, some kind of you know bias of any kind so so to me even the love of your dad is not what is not really love in your example that you gave because if it was you would love mum and dad equally not not differently true true love is not biased god's love isn't biased and so yours won't be when you truly love so what you're describing to me is not what what i would call love it's addiction you have addictions with your father and not with your mother. But when it comes to using your will to love in the world, you will be without bias. You will offer it to everyone. Like myself and Mary offer Eve. Many of you have attacked us in the past. You, you included, actually, have attacked us in the past. And we still offer you our love, right, without bias. We prevent you from attacking us. We'll take action to do that. But we'll offer you love without bias. We still offer you the same gift that we offer somebody who's loved us. So somebody who loves us and somebody who doesn't still gets the, all, of, all of the material we offer is still there on tap to anybody who, whether they love us or don't love us. There are even people in the media who don't love us at all and they grab our material and then use it to not love us more. And we still leave it there for them. Right? So any bias in love is not love. Right. We need to come to understand this is, a great, this is a great opportunity here on the earth to develop your strong will to love. But don't think that if you love somebody, one person, and don't love the other, that the love for the one person is actually completed because it's not. When you truly love, you will love all people, not just people who are your favourites, you know, who you get along with or people who, who listen to you or people who respond to you. You'll love everybody. Does yep. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. <clears throat> so what I'm getting at in this conversation with you is you have great opportunity on this world. The world has, has, has it needs love, right? So this is a great opportunity for you, actually. Because we're living in this world, it's a great opportunity in a number of directions. Firstly, it's an opportunity for you to develop a strong will to love, even in an environment that is unloving. It's an opportunity. Many of you see it as a drawback. But it's actually an opportunity. It will strengthen your resolve and therefore your will, your soul-based will, if you can love in a world that's not loving you in return. It will help you greatly for your future to engage that kind of strength of will. But not only that, there are so many people who need love. There's so many organisations that need love. There's so many businesses that need love. There's so many things happening on the planet, religions that need love, that you have opportunities every single moment to express it. And yet we don't take them. So that's an indication that we're sort of waiting for other people to love us before we love them. And what I'm suggesting to you is stop waiting for other people to love you first and instead engage the process of loving people who are not loved. And if you can't do that, work through your aspiration to do so, so that you develop an aspiration to actually do that, develop a desire, develop your will to do that. If you do that, the rewards are incredible. Like, you imagine that many, many of you are business-minded people, right? You've, some of you have had businesses in the past. Many of you have had businesses in the past. 
I, I can think of thousands of businesses where you could start up a new business that's just based upon love and it runs in harmony with love and it could benefit lots and lots of people on the earth and in the end the world would just think it's a fantastic thing. Right? There, there's so many opportunities just in business to, to engage love in the process. Many of you ha are involved in music or the arts or many of you have been educated in all sorts of walks of life, health and other areas, legal areas, health areas. You could bring love in, into those areas. You could choose to engage processes and businesses that do that. Now, yes, it's going to be hard at the start. You're not going to get much support because the world is going to disagree with you. But as momentum goes, what will happen is eventually people will start to feel the love you have and then that love will, will do the work it needs to do to, to change things around you. So you could do that. You could choose to do that. But many of you are not. You're, you're sitting back relaxing waiting for me to do it for you. Waiting for me to create something that you can in, share in. They're my creations. I'm the one that's going to get the feeling of, oh, I did something great there. I'm suggesting you, you start creating things that are in harmony with your love, your love and your desires that will benefit the world. You've got plenty of opportunities. There's more than 7 billion people who need some love. But the things holding us back is that we're waiting to be loved by someone else before we engage this process. We want somebody else to love us first. The people who wait for somebody else to love them first usually do not engage love while they're on earth. And they only engage love once they pass. And those people also have the least amount of will to engage love because they're waiting for someone else to love them first. They also very often do not recognise the gift of love when it's given. So this is our opportunity. We have the opportunity to see the gift of our love, the power that it has on others. We have the opportunity to engage our will to en engage the power of that love with other people here on earth. This opportunity will bring to us lots of challenging situations which we'll need to work through our unhealed emotional state in order to engage. And in the process, we will develop such a strong will that no one can shake us from being loving or truthful. No one. No spirit, no person, no matter what threat, no matter what blackmail, no matter how they bribe us, you won't, they won't shake you. That's, that's what you'll be like. You'll have a definite a definite goal and you'll carry it out because it's out, out in harmony with love. So what I'd like to encourage you to do is what I said to my first century brothers and sisters. Let your light shine in the world. Develop your own will to love first because you're going to need it. You're going to need a very strongly developed will to love here. Develop that and then engage it in the world. And, and then watch what happens. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be surprised about the outcome. I did that for a very short period in my life in the first century. I only lived till I was 35 years of age in the first century. And 2,000 years later, they still have religions <laughs> that came, from, well, supposedly came from what I taught. And some of those religions are still teaching parts of that truth today. One person engaging his will to love. In a world that's even more difficult then than now. Imagine if a hundred of us do it. Or a thousand of us do it what kind of impact there will be for <coughs> generations to come. That's the legacy you can leave the planet with after you've left. Hmm. 
So that's the end of that talk. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the future plans that we have for our discussions with you, and then we'll be able to finish up. So we've got, uh, so these are just more practical things that we want to discuss with you, and uh, and also tell you about when these particular things will be happening. Now, what's going on is that, uh, as we've said to you, we've developed 240 hours of material, or it's about 250 hours or so of material to present to you. And the next set of presentations, which will be happening in May and June, will be the presentations associated with developing your loving self. Then the ones that are happening in November are the ones that are associated with understanding God's laws of love. So they are the next two series of discussions we'll be having. And it might not be with you, it might be with anybody else who comes here. At this stage, I think there's still plenty of places in the third one, isn't there? I think the second one is fairly full in both cases. Maybe if Mary joins me now and we can just... <laughs> Hello <Okay>. everyone. <laughs> nice to see you guys. <laughs> um, so what's the deal with them? Yes, there's about 10 to 12 places left in each of the groups uh, the May group and the June group, each, so it has each one has about 10 to 12 places left. Um, and the November ones are filling up already. There's already at least 50 in one of them, and the other one is still quite a bit of space. Mm. So. so there's plenty of space in those if you want to come. Yep. Okay, so, so that's our first goal is to have those done, and we're, we're planning to have three done this year, three done the next year, and two done the year after that. Does that make sense? So we'll see how we go with carrying out those plans, <laughs> if we're not kicked out of the venue for some unknown reason first. There's people pestering the venue already, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but th So that, that's our first pl plan, basically, is to, is to give you this full program as much as we're able to do, just to help, help you in your relationship with God and your education in love. Have you guys found this week beneficial? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful material, hey? Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Our goal is to get the recordings of these material out to everyone as soon as possible. But um, to just give you some idea of the process, it takes normally anywhere from two to four hours per hour of recording for the guys to edit. We've done 60, around 64 hours of recording, so that means that there's almost, like, if you multiply that by three, say on the average, that's almost 200 hours of editing to do. Now, we're going to try to do that, uh, and when I say we, uh, it's probably better to say Igor and Lena <laughs> are going to try to do that over the next two to three weeks. So we're hoping by the end of March that we'll actually have the material out, and then we, what we do is it's too big to load from Australia, so we actually send it to the USA and we load it, upload it in the USA to our servers in Canada and then it gets distributed to YouTube and everything from there. So, so the guys do that editing and then I do all of the distribu distributing and uploading and all of those kind of things. So we're hoping that by the end of... Uh, probably the beginning of April or maybe the first week in April that we'll have that process finished for you. So that means that both the first and the second groups will be up and so anyone who wants to come to the next set of uh, in the series, we're hoping that they first watch what you've participated in in this particular series. And uh, you can see that um, if you don't engage this talk first, the next one will have a lot of gaps in it for you if you, if you haven't first come to or, or seen or examined these particular presentations. So our goal is to get them out. Hopefully within three to four weeks from now we'll have those out and uh, that means then that you'll have them available to you. There'll be around about, uh, well it'll be about 120 gigabytes of data that will be uh, available at that point in time. 
Now, because of that, and because we've only then got four, four or five weeks before our, we start the next ones, um, we won't be doing any other stuff in between, probably, uh, because we have to firstly dismantle everything here and take it home, and, and we've got this four-week period where we've got to do all this very busy work, and during that time, Mary and myself are working more on the next program for you, so, so we spend three or four weeks doing that, while Lena and Igor spend three or four weeks doing the editing. And, um, and so, so there's very little time in between for us to actually then set up the studio again and get recording and then dismantle the studio back to come back here. So it's highly likely that we'll have very little, if any, recordings other than sound recordings, other than the, you know, the, and the, the 64 different recordings that will come from these events during that period. Um, so that's our plan for each of the groups. We're going to try to do that for every single group. Uh, we have a, so for us, there's a very solid month of work uh, straight after the groups uh, to get them out. And, uh, and that applies to both uh, Igor and Lena and, and myself and Mary. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing. Graham, you would like to ask? Um. Who around the place is updating hard drives? I know you do. Yep. Um, who else is there? Well, there's no one else that has uh, an updated, although um, that's not true, Teresa does have one now. Um, but after we've done all this copying, obviously we, we will be the only ones that have an updated. So the key is just to drop them off in our letterbox or send them to us and give us some way of sending them back and we'll get them back to you as, as needed. Very simple for us to do. We have processes involved yeah. that do all of that for you. Thank I you. can do that while he's doing other yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it's an easy enough process to yeah. do. So, so many of you, if you do send in your drives, um, send them in with the saying that you know you'd like all the assistance group stuff on there, and we will make sure that once we've got it all up, that we copy them onto your drives and send them back. Oh, so like I know before we had to get the whole lot. Um, yes, no, you just send the whole drive and we'll, we'll copy you'll get it. You'll get everything. The whole lot inclusive of like what I mean the assistance is, groups. You know, I've got stuff up until a year ago. Yep. Um, do I need to just completely wipe the drive and you'll just do the whole lot or what? No, if your drive, your drive will have to be bigger than one terabyte because after this group we'll be at 1.1 terabyte. So you'll need to have a two terabyte drive or something like that. And if you've got a two terabyte drive, all we do is we copy what over the top of what's on there pretty much. Um, but we have a process that only updates the things that need updating. So that way it takes a lot shorter. So, so it's actually better for us if you've previously got an update that you leave that update on the drive. Oh, Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, our processes work out what's already there and, wor and work out what's not there and, and then make a copy. Oh, cool. So okay. I've written processes to do that. Thank you. Mm. Yep. Okay, is there any questions about the drives or those kind of things? No? Um, if we go to Glenn, uh, Gail, sorry. Is it Glenda? Glenda, Glenda. sorry. Glenda. Glenda, and then, yep. There is a process on the website where we can update our own drives, is that correct? Uh, yes, you, but you'll need an unlimited, or uh, probably an unlimited internet connection to do it. Okay. So, so you can update uh, from the, our servers. That, um, so, that, so the people overseas, for example, use that service extensively where they, it's a BitTorrent uh, sync service, it's called. And yes, that process is still, will still be available to update your drives. So if you've got an unlimited internet connection, that's the way to go. But if your in internet connection is not unlimited, then, then it will blow away all of your data because we've got 120 <laughs> gigs of data that will be downloaded. Yeah. So, so as long as you've got an unlimited internet connection, then you can update your drive that way. Yep. Amber, thanks. Um, my question was in relation to breakfast tomorrow. Is that an appropriate time to ask that? Sure. Um, are we allowed to bring anyone? By anyone, I mean my children and Cameron to I th breakfast? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Patty? I'm if we just wait for the mic so everyone can hear. I've used the BitTorrent and downloaded. 
Um, but the file structure, I don't quite understand. I don't see the audio material. I only see the video. You, if you open up the website, under yeah. the website, you, the audio material is all linked. It, like, we have a complete copy of the website on that drive as well. So do I need a program to open the website? No, you don't. You just need to open the right file, which is just called index. Index. HTML. Okay. And if you just open that, it'll bring up the entire website as if you're on the internet, but it will all be from your local drive. Okay. And then you can just choose whatever audio files you want and it automatically plays them. Okay. Thanks. Mm. It also automatically plays any videos from that website too, if you have it on your local copy. Um, we are going to do some instructional videos of how to, <laughs> how to do it, been wanting but, but honestly do we've been so time. busy with other things that we haven't got around. <laughs> Eagle's been wanting to do it for nearly a year and a half or whatever it is, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> the trouble is I've been changing the website too frequently <laughs> for us to, to do it properly, but, but we're hoping to do that sometime this year, put some instructional videos so that you know how to use your discs. Because on the disc is actually the entire website, all of the audios, all of the PDFs, all of the device stuff, plus all the videos. <coughs> yeah, so everything that we've ever done is on one drive that way. Yep. Mm. Any other questions about that? No, so that's what, we're, that's what we're doing. That's our plans for the next uh, few months. So we'll be pretty busy. And, um, and obviously we hope to see another set of group. We don't know if it would be your particular faces. Uh, we've tried to plan out the groups so that you can at least get to one a year or you know something like that if you want to if you're working and things like that uh, because we, we try we were thinking of actually compressing them down to fitting them all in one year or something but the only problem with that is it doesn't give you enough time to absorb the information and act upon it but the second the second thing is that it also creates this problem with regard to whether you can get time off of work and, and, you know, travel here and then the cost of being here and all those kind of things and whether you can save up for that. So we, we thought, well, no, it's not very practical to try to fit it all in one year and that's why we've spread it out over a two and a half year period. Does that make sense? Do you all feel like you've got some good things to go away and work on now? Yeah. yeah. That's great, yeah. hey? Yeah. That's and who's coming to the next... To the second group in one of the sessions. So a fair portion of you. Yeah, nearly yeah, so half, I'd reckon. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll definitely That's see you fantastic, there. Fantastic, hey. Mm. We don't know whether Mayor will be presenting with me the next one yet, but we'll see what happens there. Um, so you might have to put up with me one more time <laughs> by myself. <laughs> he did Such an awesome great. job, didn't he, on his own? Yeah. 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 It's a big, big job to talk for five hours a day. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're ready for a rest? <laughs> I am ready for a rest. Yeah. I've been talking for, well... <laughs> How many hours did you calculate it? Well, it's around it's 11, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30. I've, I've been talking. I've been talking for nearly 70 hours over the last three weeks wow. straight. So, And a lot of it's... Because uh, I've done two of these groups, of course. Um, so... You know, obviously it's a long time to spend presenting and, and it's the first time I've actually done that, actually, to present for that period of time. Fortunately, my uh, throat and health has maintained the... <laughs> <laughs> lasted the maintained distance. Ma lasted yeah. the distance, yeah. He'd be a pretty good university lecturer, don't you reckon? <laughs> Wouldn't you have loved him as a university lecturer, whoever went to university? <laughs> Heaps of subjects. <laughs> yep. pick, a, pick a topic. Any topic. I haven't even started yet yeah. either. Do you know that, don't you? <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, I haven't even started yet, aren't you? So <laughs> <laughs> this is all the prelim before yeah. you get to the juicy stuff. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to my own progression because um, there's so many things that I'm aware of that we need to discuss at some point in the future. And, and I'm also looking forward to presenting to groups of people of different types, you know, so, you know, presenting to a group of scientists or presenting to a group of, uh, you know, different religions and so forth. And so these are all things I'm looking forward to in the future. Um, yeah, we'll see. I have to be ready for this, for that. So, so that's the first thing, get myself ready and then we'll see where we go from there. But there's a lot of truth to share, you know, and, and a lot of it's not just what I've been sharing with you, the spiritual truths or emotional truths, but there's also a lot of physical truths or laws and uh, scientific truths that need to be shared. So, 
So, you know, that will all benefit the world in some way. So, you know, very interested in sharing those things as well. Mm. You've been able to practice on us then, Yeah, that's right. You're my practice crew. <laughs> lab rats. <laughs> Slow lab rats. <laughs> I have to give you some drugs to get you going. You know, you've got to just develop that will muscle. Yeah. Think of, if you develop it from now until you get to the next group, how much more amazing will the next group be? Yeah. yeah. Your capacity yeah. to absorb truth depends upon the actions you take, doesn't it, between yeah. times? Because obviously the emotional resistances, you've, you've felt the emotional resistance kick in right on that third day and you could feel how it stayed with us and almost until yesterday. Today has been a bit better, but yesterday was pretty resistive too. So, so that you can feel those emotional resistances kicking in and how they prevent you from absorbing truth. So the key is to work on, work on those, you develop the will, you know, the, the aspiration to work on those particular things. And it's very important that you see that things have to come from within yourself, from within, rather than always being reliant on somebody inspiring you. You want to make sure that you can inspire yourself. And that's a very key part of your future development, in fact. And, and this is how a person lives in the world with nobody else in the world believing anything that they believe and still presenting truth by having your own personal sort of aspiration really strong. That's how you, r you arrive at that place. So, so it's such an important thing, your will. Very important for you to develop. And, and, and it's the... And this is why we wanted to present this material to you first. Now, we'd planned to do that many years ago, because two years ago, you remember the very first day was all about your will. So you can see that, you know, we've been aware that this has been an issue for a long time for many of you. And it's great that you've created, through your own efforts actually, a lot of you, this opportunity. So when we offered the opportunity, we had three options. One option was that we did it with a group like yourselves, with 70 or 80 people here, if we found a venue. And we, we, it, with thanks to Raj and Suzanne, that was pretty fast finding the venue because I've used this venue before. And then we came here and checked it all out. It was all good. It's really good. It's a great venue. It would be ideal for what we want, we felt. And, uh, and then what we decided to do was go, OK, well, if, if it turned out that less than 40 of you enrolled, then what we would do is we'd select 20 and we'd do it in our studio at home, right? And, and if it turned out that less than 20 enrolled, we were just going to have me and Mary having a chat <laughs> for, for a couple of weeks straight to present the material. So, so whatever happened, you were going to get the material whether you liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. And, uh, um, but but um, it's been really good to be able to interact with you, though. So, you know, that's a powerful thing. You, you ask questions. People get to hear many of the questions that they themselves would ask. And this adds to the benefit of the group by having yourselves participating. And, and that was your desire. Your desire created that. And the, and the reality is, in the f after we thought, oh, we, tried, we negotiated with the venue around the, for a six-week period where we didn't know what was going to happen. So we had a six-week window where... We, we made the tentative booking and then we waited to see what would happen yeah. with people's interest and people's donations just to cover the costs of hiring the venue. Yeah. And you'd cover the cost of these two groups, the v both the first and the second group, in the first week. So that meant we lovely. could straight away go to them. We did that at the end of the first week. We went to them straight away and said, look, we've definitely got the first week happening, so that's firm booking. And uh, um, how long will it be before we have to let you know the second booking? And they told us by, I think it was the end of uh, December or just before. I think we volunteered, actually. I think we, we volunteered the end of we'll December. Because we notice. needed to give them plenty of time. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise they, you know, they, we're chewing up things that they could be booking for other things. So, so we told, I think we told them 24th or 23rd of December, actually, didn't we, or 18th mm -hmm. or something? Mm -hmm. and, and within one more week, you had the second one booked. Yeah, so that's really good. Yeah, so that, so, and as it turned out, we've finished up having enough money come in to pay for the third two groups as well. So, so what that mean, means now 
is that, is that the one in November is also paid for um, from, from our expenses perspective. And th that means now that we could just focus on the material after that and getting the material, material going. Now, in the new financial year, in Australia, the financial year is from July, for those of you who are not, not Australian, the, the financial year is from July to the following June. So come July 2016, we'll open the bookings for the next year. So that way people can plan in advance and we can also let the venue know if we get enough money uh, for those particular events, we can let the venue know well in advance that we want to book the venue we for should, those events. Yeah, we should clarify, you can book for them already, but we'll open the donations. We'll open at that the time. donations at yeah. that time. Yeah. So you've already booked for them, yeah. many of you, but we'll open the donations for the next year because we don't have the funds to pay for those events. Um, so whether they go ahead will de again depend on your, on your desire for them to go ahead. David, you wanted to ask. <coughs> Um, I haven't donated for the next assistance group, but that's already booked in. Would it be better for me to put that donation towards, or just give it to you guys and you work it out, or just say what I'm donating for and you guys? Honestly, uh, really yeah. It, honestly, um, all we've done is informed you guys about how much it costs us to run the event. That's all. We've just provided you with information. And we've also said to you that if we don't get enough donations, the event can't go ahead, obviously, because we don't have the funds to pay for them. But um, So it really is up to you how you do it. My suggestion, you guys, is you can trust us, right? <laughs> Yep. Many of you don't still, so it's, but but <laughs> but you can trust us to wisely spend any money you donate. <laughs> we we don't spend it on ourselves very much, as you know. So we, we, the reality is, we spend most of our funds trying to extend, whether it's a global thing we want to extend or or these groups. So yeah, how you donate, you can tell us you want to use it in a group, and we'll use it there. If you don't tell us, we'll then we'll use it where we feel it needs to be used. I, I'm not sure if Jesus shared with you, but there were some people from overseas who couldn't come or some people even in Australia who couldn't come who made donations to make sure these groups could go ahead, which was really lovely because yeah. they offered that opportunity to other people to come, but they just really wanted to support the, yeah. the event. I so. think there was a close to one-fifth of the donations come from those people. Mm. So, so there are people who you know, wanted to see them go ahead even though they could not participate in them. Yeah. Which is a loving thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. People using their will to love, huh? Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Before, yeah. They Before they even did the course, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, so how, how um, it's up to you. you. You can tell us how you wanted to use the donation and we'll use it that way in harmony with the group. Or you can just say, look, we'll use it wherever and we'll use it wherever. Um, you know, the reality is we do have you know, significant expenses with our worldwide uh, trying to deliver truth. And the reality also is that we haven't covered uh, those expenses through donations from the group. So it's, if it wasn't so. for certain people giving us significant funds, the reality is our worldwide operation still would not be able to be supported with mm -hmm. the general donations we receive. Mm. There's, there's also the other... Um, opportunity uh, available to people overseas. If you wanted to donate to the possibility of an overseas assistance group, you could do that as well, because we are collecting donations for, for a possible event, either in Europe or the USA, or both. Yeah. But at the moment, there's not many donations towards that. And the cost of those events are much higher for us. And I, yeah, I should say that. I think there's about $5,000 in donations, but it costs... No, there's, there's nearly fourteen or 15000 15, now. I'm sorry, but yeah. For, for both the US and the Europe. But Collectively, yeah. But the reality is to get uh, Lena and Igor and myself and uh, Mary overseas for a month, because it's... You can see that it's uh, you know just the flight alone, flights alone, ten thousand, and then you know the accommodation is around about one hundred and fifty dollars US a day, which is close to two hundred Australian a day. So you for for thirty days, so there's another twelve and a half, thirteen thousand, and then um, we're struggling to find an event of a suitable size. Uh, sorry, a, a, a venue of a suitable size that doesn't cost less than two thousand US a day to hire. 
and that's like two and a half thousand Australian a day and and we we need to book it for a minimum of 21 days so you see that setting up an event overseas you know is in the sixty thousand dollars plus mark Australian so this event cost us 14,000 to set up um, so the comparison is quite significantly different compared to the overseas venues and our Australian dollar, yes. And, uh, but also, this venue, they've given us a discounted rate of $165 a day. You compare that to $2,000 of their usual rate dollars a day for yeah. a venue overseas, and you can start seeing that one, one day over there pays for almost you know, a fair portion of one week here. Mm -hmm. It's like, so, so then we started looking at, well, wh how many people overseas could get here and we had to consider all of that. And in the end, um, we decided to have them here, at least this first set of groups in Australia, because um, the costs of doing the groups overseas compared with the benefits uh, are not as high. And, and in some ways, we prefer to use that, that kind of funds. You know, you're talking sixty or $70,000. Um, you could use that kind of funds for new servers and other things, you know, that, that would actually be more beneficial in the long run. So. Um, so we're still debating about the overseas uh, venues and, um, and we still have struggled to find a suitable overseas venue with the appropriate cost that's not going to cost us like, significant funds. I think at this stage our investigations have led us to a few places in the States and in Europe, but I think the smallest cost is about $80,000 for our <laughs> one month trip, you know which is quite a significant amount of funds. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind too, we have a lot of excess baggage given our equipment, so. And we would not be taking speakers with us or other things, but we have to take, we really need to take the video mixing equipment along with the mixer, because without that, when we come back home, we've now got, instead of getting 200 hours of material you know, to edit, we will have like 800 hours of material to edit and you won't get it out in six months, you know. So having the switcher make, uh, on site in the actual room makes a huge difference to the editing process. And it's getting to the stage now where the guys, in some cases, we can get stuff down to one on one, one hour, one, one hour to do it one hour recording, one hour to do it. And in some cases, we've even got it faster than that in our studio. So having the switcher has made a big difference to what we can produce. Yeah. Patty, thanks. I've just been curious for a while. Any thoughts of going live? Um, yes, we've investigated the process of going live on many occasions prior to now. Um, the problem is the technology in Australia is still not very mature. And also there are issues with regard to the way certain websites who stream live and how they handle the bandwidth of what we would like to stream. But um, we have found some potential solutions to the problem, just recently been released in Australia, where they aggregate uh, mobile phone signals to create one stream, uh, but it means an aggregation of eight different signals to create one stream and the device to do that cost twenty thousand dollars, and um, and then you need the connection to be bought as well, and the cost of that we we would be streaming a hundred and twenty gigabytes in the space of thirty days, and so the cost of that works out to I think uh, it worked out recently to about three thousand dollars for each venue, um, and so c it gets down again to some money again. You know, lots of things things end up. So in the end. Uh, you won't see any change out of $30,000 to do it. And the, uh, and the disadvantage is the people who are you know, engaging the process other sides of the world are going to have to do it at very strange hours of the day. <laughs> you know, like, um, so, you know, and then it's on top like of that... like we do here with the World Cup soccer and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you'd have to engage it, you know, like if we started at... Uh, for example, at 10.30 in the morning here, well, that's like three, two in the morning or whatever it is in the UK and in Europe and, and in the States, uh, it's the night before, you know, and very impractical for a lot of people to be involved. So we have considered it, but um, there's the technological issues to resolve first, which we're close to resolving, but it means throwing $30,000 at it uh, 
as a trial. You know, we don't even know if it's going to be successful and it's quite a significant amount of funds to throw at something that we don't even know is going to work. Um, but um, but it, obviously we'll, we'll give it a go if we receive the funds to do it, we'll, we'll give it a go. But it doesn't guarantee even that it's beneficial for people overseas because mm. sometimes it's better to be able to sit down you know, at a timing that can, is convenient overseas. Whereas if we do the live streaming, uh, obviously it will benefit people here in Australia because they can sit out at the same time, but, but for most other countries it's not going to benefit them si overly much unless the audience gets up, you know, into the tens of thousands or thou thousands. I don't see much point in it at this stage. But if the audience got up to the tens of thousands, then obviously, you know, you'd probably consider doing it then. Yeah, but but you'd, uh, an event such as the length of this might still be a struggle for most people to keep up with. The event we've planned here was, you, you see that every talk led to the next talk. Right? Everything was sort of joined together for you. Everything led to the next thing. And you imagine if you were home somewhere and you started listening at 8 o'clock at night and then by the time the program's finished here it's 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you might not sit up that long and then you miss the joining bits for the next bit and, and that we feel would be quite negative to the development of the material as well. So there's, there's issues to iron out when it comes to the live, the live presentation of the material. Mm. Just on the venue quickly, <coughs> have you guys enjoyed this venue? I've heard from a few people. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to Philip, wasn't it? Phil saying he, he can get up in the morning, go for a surf, come here. <laughs> awesome, hey? <laughs> go home, have a bit of an exercise, have some dinner. Nice, relaxed process. It's the first course he's ever been on where he can surf every morning. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't put that in the advertising, obviously, because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that will to surf is pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you wanted to ask. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to ask what time breakfast was tomorrow. Um, I think just they the open at important. 7 and through to 10. We'll probably what be there about 8 break? or 8.30 or something. Yeah. We've got a fairly heavy day tomorrow. We've got to be fully packed up by tomorrow evening. So we'll spend, you know, probably till 10 o'clock there and then we have to come in here and, and pack. And we've got to make sure we pack it so that we can remember where everything is the next time we get at it. So it has to be just the three or four of us that pack as well. We can't have everybody packing, otherwise it, we can't find anything afterwards. Do you want need a hand with the chairs or anything? Yes, after this group is finished, what we would like you to do is to stack the chairs four high over in this section along the window. And what we'll do is we'll leave, uh, I think it's 12 or 16 chairs. I think the last time we had, can you remember how many we had last time? 12. Uh, if we leave 12 chairs down the front here, because we'd like to take a photo of you all, if you'd like to have a photo. Would you like to have one? Because yeah. if, you, if you don't want one, we won't do it. <laughs> What's the use of your wheel here? Yes. <laughs> yes? Okay. It's non-compulsory. Non you, you can opt in or out if you want. Yeah. But uh, just on, bef on leaving the room, if you can um, leave your name tags on the back table as well, because yeah. we'll reuse them. We're going to reuse them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah. So uh, the more part up in the corner over here, along the edge there would be best because we're then going to take dismantle a lot of our stuff tonight tomorrow and put it all over the floor and get all of them in the right areas and pack them really tightly into our containers. So um, it'd be nice to have a bit of spare space. But we'll also have this area at the front open. Uh, if you give us about five, uh, uh, if you can after you finish after we've finished, I'm happy to answer some more questions yet. So don't. <laughs> You're keen to go, you can go. <laughs> but um, we definitely would like some lines of chairs up over there because it helps us with tomorrow as well. We have to be out by tomorrow night because there's bookings the very next day um, for where they're using the, the auditorium. So, Is there any other questions you would like to ask before you are released from prison? <laughs> Sandra, what would you like to ask over there? I'm just wondering if it's um, worth changing the next assistance group because I've booked into the first one, but I'm in the second one here. Like, is it beneficial to use that time? 
gap. Do you know what I mean? To go Sorry, to the I'm second. Not. Uh, I think that is up to you. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah. In terms of us, it doesn't matter if you're okay. in the f- first cool. or second. Thank you. Yeah, we'll beat you if you're in the <laughs> <laughs> it, It's fine to switch around, guys. A lot of people have contacted me and there's a really simple procedure. You just, just log into Eventbrite. Um, delete yourself off of one. Yep. You just log in with the same email address you use to book your ticket. You get a list of tickets that you've already booked. You can click on them and when you click on it, it gives you the option to cancel or delete. And then you just book a new booking into the group you actually want to be in. So really, very simple. Really easy to ship around. We're, we've and been so happy with Eventbrite. It saved us huge amounts of time. <laughs> it's a wonderful service. It's a wonderful service, um, yeah. And I can print out the guest list the day before you all so come. If you'd like to donate to Eventbrite, go <laughs> by all means, go ahead. <laughs> They've saved us huge amounts of time. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ivana. I just wanted to say a big thank you to you all, like who created the. Um, yeah, let's thank the people, shall we? Firstly, yeah. we'd like to thank Corny for being up there, standing up there and <laughs> videoing. And Kelly's on probation. So <laughs> <laughs> in training. <laughs> in training. So thank you, Kelly. She, she's doing that because Corny um, is actually engaging some of his desires next time and he's doing a builder's course, so he won't be available for a couple of the days of filming. So, so Kelly's going to be doing our filming for us during those periods of time. So, you know, we're, so we're giving her the training <laughs> that she needs to do that. We'd like to thank Lena and Igor... Yeah, so. yeah, you can see that they spend all of their time doing these things and uh, obviously it takes a lot of their time. And so, you know, you guys, you know how much we appreciate you, but hopefully you guys appreciate them too. Um, And particularly, uh, you know, even though it might not be people here in Australia, because you can attend events, but people overseas, you know, are very dependent upon uh, Lena and Igor and the work that they do. So, yeah, we'd like to thank them for that. I don't know where we'd be without you guys in terms of sharing divine truth and... And it's pretty tricky, hey, when these guys are up here serving or they're very involved. They have to be very involved in order to have a good quality product. But they're listening. They can't really listen too much because they get get too involved. They do, I know. They get quite... Things hit them, but they can't drop what they're doing. They have to just stay. And Lena has cries while she's sitting there (laughs) which i think is beautiful um but you know they they really stay with what they're giving to others and i think that's really beautiful yeah yeah and uh thanks for donating for our accommodation for lena and igor and for ourselves and and also there's a donation box up the back for corny and for uh, kelly so if you'd like to donate to them but last time corny received enough donations to pay for his uh, accommodation as well so so we'd like to thank you guys for doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, you know, without those things, it, it's not sustainable, right? We can do it once or twice, but we can't keep doing it. So we'd like to thank you for that. I'd like to thank my girl for being involved in... You know, oh, I don't anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yep. we, we haven't seen each other for a week. Haven't seen each other for a while. <laughs> Oh, no, just got to thank him, eh? Yeah. Thanks, guys. And that's my personal thanks included in that because Jesus really stepped in when I felt that I couldn't be here and it was really special for me to to take that time for myself and, um, yeah, I I hope he gave you all my love because I sent it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, I loved being involved in preparing this material. I love this topic of will. Oh, it's like <laughs> it's nearly my favourite, except maybe God's laws, except maybe sin, except <laughs> me, you know. <laughs> so I'm so glad that you found benefit in um, in that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're we're looking forward to see how you use your will. Looking forward to see what you might create, you know. At this stage, I think 
for, for many of you, you haven't even thought about what you might create if you used your will and harmony with love really as a strong desire. But honestly, a lot of the things you can, like a lot of you have a lot of talent, right? A lot of different talents. And, and if you use your will and harmony with love for the, with those particular talents, who knows in 10 years time what you may have created? You know, things in the way the world's working at the moment, things in the world can change very, very rapidly. And, and you could be, what you create can be a part of what changes rapidly as well. So there's a lot of potential, it's just how you're going to use your will as to whether any of that potential will be realised. Yeah, so we're looking forward to seeing how you do that. And we'd like to thank the people who are actually listening on video as well. Because obviously, you know, I think there's now close to three and a half, four thousand people who are, who are watching on video now. And... Um, and obviously, many of them don't have the opportunity to get to an actual event. Those of you who have had the opportunity to get to the event, this is your first event. H how many of you, this is your first event? Very first event. Okay, so a few. And, and it's a bit different than watching it, isn't it? It's, a, it's like a different experience. You, it's a bit more confronting, but it's also a, like you get to feel a, the presence of spirit friends and you get to feel... The, the, a difference. It's different than actually watching it on a, on a video. So, so that's why we try to give people the opportunity to come to an event rather than just watch the events. But we realise there's many people around the world that can't come to an event and don't have the funds to come to an event. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that all of this truth is available to them as well. And, and in fact, that's going to be a large part of how we spend our funds is trying to get um, this truth shared to to people sort of all over the world, no matter what their socio-economic standing. So that's our goal too. Anyway, we come to our end. <coughs> <laughs> Cark it. Oh no, the will wasn't developed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we look forward to seeing what you do with the information you've received. And we'd like to thank you for your time and, and sharing your life with us and being willing to put your face uh, on video as well for the sake of other people, demonstrating love to them. And we know that sometimes what I come up with is quite, quite challenging to you in that process and quite emotionally triggering for you. And you being open and able to let yourself be exposed in that regard demonstrates a large amount of courage so I'd like to thank you for that that you're giving that opportunity to other people and sharing in the process of these events so thanks for your time guys thank you. mm. <laughs>